Gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 to 23. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. When we look out at the world around us, what do we see? And how, when we look out on the world around us, do we know that which is true and that which is not? It's not easy sometimes to know what is real and what is fake. A survey by Reuters released earlier this week showed that the trust the British public hold in the media, particularly newspapers and television, is dropping rapidly. And at the same time, whilst consumption of digital, particularly social media, is increasing, less than 8% of people say they believe what they read. It's perhaps a reflection of this that there are now a number of websites whose entire purpose is not to report on events in and of themselves, but to fact-check the content of other media sources. I've been struck over the past few weeks by the fact that, whichever channel I look to, I seem not to receive dispassionately reported information, but rather a commentary which I am invited to accept as the truth, to accept opinion rather than information. And, throughout all of it, I found myself realising that much of what we are being fed is simply not true. I recently watched a TV reporter tell the nation that the particular protest they were reporting on was peaceful. Thank goodness, I thought. And then the next day, the Metropolitan Police advised that at the very same event, there had been 113 arrests and 23 police officers injured. What happened between the violence on the street and my TV screen? And this becomes dangerous, just as dangerous as universities cancelling speakers whose opinions might be distasteful to some, and just as dangerous as choosing to listen only to those people with whom we generally agree. Instead of getting a wide range of views and drawing our own conclusions based on known facts and a balance of the opinions of others, we can end up in our own little echo chambers where we end up believing the world actually is as we imagine it to be. Opinion and delusion become the truth. And it's entirely possible to lose track of the real world on our doorsteps, the real lived experiences of those inhabiting the world around us, in favour of an opinion garnered from TV or the internet. And it happens because when we don't look out with a critical eye, the filters with which we view the world can become dimmed or monochrome. In short, our eyes can so easily become unhealthy. Today's Gospel reading is actually highlighting this. Immediately beforehand, Jesus points out the treasures of this earth and the transitory nature of them, and that they're not worth storing up. And he immediately afterwards, he mandates that we must choose between a love of money and possessions, or a love of people and relationships, but that we cannot have both. And sandwiched between these two concepts is the idea that the way that we view the world will feed and inform our hearts, that if our eyes are healthy, we will be full of light, and if they are not, we will be full of darkness. And therefore, if we are truly to be the people of God, we must take great care to monitor, to take the opportunity to challenge, and to take the time to think about what might be clouding our vision And if that is not to be Facebook, or BBC News, or The Guardian, or The Daily Mail, then where? Where should we look? I'd suggest that our neighbours, our friends, our family, especially that grumpy old uncle with whom you rarely agree, these are good sources of real-world news, that our shared lived experiences give an accurate report of what is actually happening in our community that the reports of the small kindnesses, the joys that we sometimes find in unexpected places, the humble and quiet services being rendered, these, these are as much the truth as the violence, discord and vitriol that sells newspapers or TV airtime. And as Bob highlighted on Wednesday, the image of a parishioner 
humbly and quietly spending time in church with God. That, that is as much the new joyous truth of our steady release from lockdown as anything else. It's that that we should look to and celebrate as we try to make sense of the world around us with all of its confusions and with all of its challenges.